guys today we continue the mail reproductive system uh, in previous lecture we have learned regarding the external genital organs in mail reproductive system but now today we are going to learn regarding the internal genitals of the male reproductive system we will see in detail here the internal genital org organs that you already know that is the testes epididymis vas deferens and the accessory glands that is the seminal vesicles prostate glands and bulbourethral glands now we'll see it in detail okay now we learn regarding the testes or we can say testicle see in figure this is the oval shaped testis the we'll see the introduction the equivalent of the ovaries in female means it is the same organ like the female but in female the sex organ that is the ovaries and in male we can say that is the testis it is a two oval shaped male organs Okay, it it is it two numbers uh, already we learn in scrotum. That is the testes are two oval shaped testes that is situated in each side of the scrotum. So that produces the sperm as well as the hormone testosterone. Now we are moving towards the size that is four point five centimeter long. 2.5 cm wide and 3 cm thick what about the shape that is in oval shape what about the weight that is 10 to 15 grams and where it is lies so the location of the testes is the testes are housed in the scrotum just behind the penis it is located inside of the scrotum on it on both sides and behind the pens. So this is all about the testes. Now we are moving towards the next level. Each testes is made up of tiny coil structure which is called as a seminiferous tubules. See in figure. There is a tiny, tightly coiled structure, we can say the seminiferous tubules. Among the tubules are cells, they produce testosterone. Okay? In the seminiferous tubules, they produce the hormone testosterone, which is a male sex hormone. Now, during the early life, early fetal life, the testes develop in the lumbar region of the abdominal cavity just below the kidneys okay during the fetal life when the baby is in the uterus at that time during the early fetal life the testes is where it is developed in the lumbar region of the abdominal cavity you can see in the figure okay behind below just below the kidneys then they descend into the scrotum taking with them covering of the peritoneum blood and lip muscles nerves and diaphragm with these all organs descend with the testes the uh, that's why you know in premature babies sometimes there will be no testes in scrotum if you examine the prenatal baby. Uh, the peridonium eventually surrounds the testes in the scrotum and become detached from the abdominal peridonium. Okay. The descent of the testes in the scrotum should be complete by the 8th month of fetal life. Okay. During the 8th month of pregnancy, at that time the fetal has descended testes. So this is all about the testes. Uh, they are surrounded by three layers of tissue that is the fibrous tissue or fibrous tissue called the tunica. Okay, the covers is called the tunica. Uh, there are the three layers. First one is a tunica vaginalis. Second is a tunica albuginia. 
third one is a tunica vasculosa okay you can see in figure tunica vasculosa this is this is the layer inside of the there is a tunica albuginea and the outer layer that is double layer that is the tunica vaginalis we will see in detail in next slide so these are the three layers of the or three covers of the testes that is the tunica first one is a tunica vaginalis then tunica albuginea and tunica vasculosa first one is the first one is tunica vasculosa this is the inner layer that that consist of the blood vessels and connective tissue okay tunica vasculosa this is the inner layer which contain the blood vessel as well as connective tissue then the tunica albuginea that connect the fibers that surround the epididymis which transport sperm out of the testes and into the penis okay this is the layer which connect the fibers around the epididymis and transport sperm to the testes the tunica vaginalis that is the last layer which contain fluids that reduce the friction between testes and scrotum okay there is, it is a two layer this is the double membrane so there is a two layer between that a uh, fluid so there will be no friction between the scrotum and testes they forming the outer covering of the testes so this is the three layer first one is the tunica vasculosa this is the inner layer then tunica albuginea uh, then the tunica vaginalis we will see the structure of the testes each testes are 200 to 300 lobules and within each lobule there are one to four convoluted loops composed of germinal epithelial cells that is called the seminiferous tubules you can see in figure it is in blue color that is the seminiferous tubules okay in each lobe one lobe is there in each lobe there is one to four convoluted loops are there which contain the epithelial cells and they call the germinal they call the seminiferous tubules between these tubules are groups of the interstitial cells that secrete the hormone testosterone after the puberty they secrete the hormone testosterone at the upper pole of the testes the tubules combine to form a single tubule okay this tubule about the 6 meter in length okay this single common tubule that is the 6 meter length and it is repeatedly folded and tightly packed into a mass that is called the epididymis so with the help of the seminiferous tubules they combine and make one tube and that is called this epididymis okay after the seminiferous tubules they become epididymis it leaves the stroke scrotum as the deferent duct after leaving scrotum epididymis become the deferent duct okay so first one is a seminiferous tubules then they combine it one and make one tube that is the epididymis on the pole of the testes then they will remove uh, this till uh, leaves the scrotum and they become a deferent duct or we can say vas deferens in the spermatic cord okay the blood and lymph vessel pass to the testes from the spermatic cord okay after the epididymis they become the vas deferens and there will be a deferent duct there will be a spermatic cord they enter and remove the blood from the testes so this is the all structure of the testes now we will go to 
was the next slide. Now we will see the function of the testes. The major two function is first one is to produce gametes or we can say sperm and second one is a produce second one they produce testosterone. The testicle in the healthy male can produce about 6 mg of the testosterone each day. Okay? They also produce hormone, sex male hormone that is the androgen. And androgens is very helpful in controlling and developing the male reproductive system. Okay? They are also helpful for the development, development of the masculine body. Features like the beard and deep voice at the time of puberty and they also influence the sexual functions. Now, the spermatozoa or we can say the sperm are produced in the seminiferous tubules of the testes. Okay, the, where they produce, the, where the sperm will produce from the seminiferous tubules. The testes make two legs sperm per minute on average. Okay, the healthy testes make two legs sperm per minute, not per day, per minute, two legs sperm. They pass through the long and convoluted, convoluted epididymis where they are stored. Okay, now where they are stored in epididymis. That is the loop, convoluted loop. The hormone controlling sperm production that is the follicle stimulating hormone which is released from the anterior pituitary. So these are the function of the testes. Okay, now we will see the next slide. Now the second part of the male reproductive system that is in the internal genital organ that is the epididymis. The epididymis is tightly coiled tubules against the testicles. Okay? Against the testicles they are the tightly coiled tubules which is thick on the testis that is the epididymis. It acts as a maturation and storage of the sperm. Okay? There will be a storage of sperm. Uh, now, adult human testicles with the epididymis, that is the, you can see in the figure, they show a head. A, total four parts are there. First one is a head of epididymis. Then second one is a body of epididymis. Third one is a tail of epididymis. And last one is a they converted into the vas deferens. Okay, four parts of the epididymis. Now, we will see the, we'll see the spermatic cords. The spermatic cord is a cord-like structure in males formed by the vas deferens or ductus deferens and surrounding the supporting tissue. It is where it is found in the scrotum. Okay. Extend through the inguinal canal and attached to the testes on the posterior cord. Okay. Where it is located from the inguinal canal to the posterior wall of the testes. The each cord contain testicular artery, testicular vein, lymphatic subsystem, different duct, testicular nerves, and they come together to form this one cord. Okay, that is this permanent cord. The cord which is covered in a sheath of smooth muscle and connective and fibrous tissue. Okay, so this is all about the spermatic cord. Now we will see the blood supply, lymph drainage and nerve supply. The arterial supply that is the testicular artery, venous drainage that is testicular vein you can see in the figure or picture. The nerve supply that is the 10th and 11th thoracic nerve. Now, vas deferens or we can say the ductus deferens or deferent duct. The vas deferens is a thin tube that starts from the epididymis to the urethra in the pens. Okay, this is a vas deferens from epididymis to the urethra in the penis okay it is a 45 centimeter long 
is 35 cm long. You can see in figure. They transport sperm from the epididymis in anticipation of the ejaculation. From the seminiferous tubules, they become the sperm. They produce the sperm. Then storage of the sperm in where they are stored in the epididymis and then they transport from the epididymis to the pelvis. Now, now we will see the location of vas deferens. It passes upwards from the testes. You can see in figure upward, in up, it goes upward from the testes to the inguinal canal and then ascends medially medially towards the posterior wall of bladder then it joined by the duct from the seminal vesicles to form the ejaculatory duct okay they join the seminal vesicles and they form they join with the ejaculatory duct Now we will see the accessory glands of the male reproductive system. These glands produce nourishing flows for the sperm that enter the urethra. Okay. For which is the main function of the accessory gland. They produce the fluids to nourish the sperm. Three accessory glands are there. First one is a seminal vesicle. Second one is a prostate gland. And third one is a bulbo-urethral gland. We will see in detail. You can see in figure. First that is the seminal vesicles. Then there will be a prostate gland besides of the urethra. Then bulbo-urethral gland. Also they are situated beside besides of the urethra. Now we will see the seminal vesicles. You can see in figure they are in two numbers that is the seminal vesicle. The seminal vesicles are sac like structure. Okay, This is a sac like structure where it is attached attached to the vas deferens at the one side of the bladder. Okay, they are attached at the one side of the bladder. They also produce a sticky yellowish fluid that contains the fructose. Seminal vesicles is produce sticky yellowish fluid which contain the fructose. We will see the function. The seminal vesicles contract and expel their stored content that is the seminal fluid during the ejaculation. Semin seminal vesicle will be contract in the whatever the stored content that is the seminal fluid. Then the seminal fluid which forms 60% of the bulk of the fluid that is ejaculated at the male orgasm. During the male organ orgasm or we can say in the semen there is 60% of the seminal fluid. Okay? Then it contains nutrients to support the sperm during their journey through the female reproductive tract. Okay? They nourish the sperm after ejaculation when they enter into the female reproductive tract. Now, we will move towards the next slide. See, this is the ejaculatory duct. Okay? It is a two tubes, each side of the blader, then two centimeter long. Okay? Each formed by the union of the duct from the seminal vesicle and deferral duct. Okay? They combine and make the ejaculatory duct. They pass through the prostate gland, okay, carrying seminal fluid and spermatozoa to the urethra. The ejaculatory duct are composed of the same layer of the tissue as the seminal vesicles. The same layer of the tissue just like the seminal vesicles. Now we will see the prostate gland. The prostate gland surrounds the ejaculatory duct at the base of the urethra, okay, where it is to 
located at the base of urethra, at the starting point of the urethra, just besides the urethra, it just below the bladder. The prostate gland is responsible for making the production of the semen. Okay, for making or production of the semen, there is role of the prostate gland. A a uh, semen is a liquid mixture of sperm cell, prostate fluid and seminal fluid. Okay, seminal vesicle fluid. So this is the combination of the fluid. Now we will see the function of prostate gland. The prostate gland secrete a thin milky fluid that makes up about 30% of the semen and gives it a milky appearance. 30% of the semen, the milky fluid and milky appearance. Okay. It contains a clotting enzyme which thickens the semen in vagina and increases the likelihood of semen being retained close to the cervix. Okay. It has a clotting enzyme. That's why semen will be clot at the entrance of the cervix so they will be the sperm will be retained into the cervix for the fertilization now we will see the bulbo urethral glands or we can say corpus gland the bulbo urethral glands are two small glands located on the sides of the urethra b sides of the urethra just below the prostate gland. You can see in figure two sides of the urethra and just below the prostate gland. Now what is the function of this gland? They produce clear slippery fluid. They empties directly into the urethra. Okay? They produce clear slippery fluid. They drain into the urethra. Now we will see the urethra. Urethra that provides a common pathway for the flow of urine and semen. It is a common pathway in male for the urine and semen. It is approximately 19 to 20 centimeter long. Okay. Now urethra has a three parts. First one is a prostatic urethra that is just near the prostate, then the membranous urethra, then the spongious or penile urethra. Okay, in figure C first that is the prostatic urethra, then the membranous urethra, then the spongy or penile urethra. We will see in detail. The prostatic, prostatic urethra that originates at the urethral orifice of the bladder. Okay, it starts from the bladder and passes to the prostate gland. Okay, at the prostatic urethra, they have the prostatic gland. The membranous urethra, that is the shortest and narrowest part of the urethra. It extends from the prostatic gland to the bulb of penis. Okay, after passing through the perineal membrane. Okay, it is a short urethra, and from it, it is start from the prostatic urethra to the spongy or penile urethra. Now, third one is a spongious or penile urethra. It, li it lies between the corpus spongiosum of the pelvis and terminate at the external urethral orifice in glans pelvis. Start from the, it is always almost lies in the pelvis. Okay. So three parts of the urethra: prostate, membranous, and pelvis. Now, now it has two sphincters. Two urethral sphincters are there. First one is an internal sphincter, and second one is an external sphincter. You can see in figure there is external sphincter or internal sphincter. 
Now, internal sphincter consists of the smooth muscle fibers at the neck of the bladder above the prostate. Okay, where it is found? Neck of the bladder above the prostate gland. And external sphincter is consists of the skeletal muscle fibers which surrounding the membranous part. Okay, which surround the membranous part of the urethra. Okay, so this is the true sphincter. First one is a internal sphincter that is the located at the neck of bladder. And second one is a external sphincter that is the after the prostate gland, there will be an external urethral sphincter. So, this is the true sphincter. Now, if you have any query, you can ask me. Okay. So, this is all about the main reproductive system. Just we have finished anatomy and physiology of the main reproductive system. We have completed both internal as well as external genital organs okay thank you hello guys i have made video for you this is the educational video is a part of anatomy and physiology if you like my video then please subscribe my channel and like the video thank you